Hello and welcome to Healthy Tales with Sahiba, brought to you by Zokunut, a leading business management software for health and nutrition businesses. Healthy Tales with Sahiba is a first of its kind talk show featuring leaders from the health, nutrition and fitness industry. Come join me as I welcome my guest today. Today on my show are two phenomenal guests with extraordinary stories. Please welcome Mr. Ryan Fernando, the founder of Qua Nutrition and Ms. Tanya, the CEO of Qua Nutrition. Thank you so much for coming on my show. It's an absolute pleasure to have you here today. Thank you for having us. Ryan, let's start and uh, dive straight into this. Um, you are the founder of Qua Nutrition. What inspired you to start Qua? So I've always been a uh... A nerdy guy working in the lab, studied at Goa Medical College, looked at the field across in the lab. And you just see that, hey, there's so much fun out there. So I did work with many supplement companies in the first part of my life. And every time I worked with any of these supplement companies, I had a team of nutritionists or dietitians with me. So I would go and sell a protein powder, a green tea extract, a multivitamin. And people always said, why bolo dal chawa roti kaisa lene kare? <laughs> every time we went from North India to South India to wherever we went, People were like, ha, thik hai, thik hai, ye leka, but tell me how to get my bread, butter, roti in order. So when we started trying to sell nutritional products, we found out that people were more interested in getting their nutrition meal, nutrition diet in check. From and food. I, from food. Mm. And I had teams of uh, what we call as nutrition coaches, nutritionists, dietitians with me. So suddenly I had more nutritionists than salespeople. With me. Mm -hmm. And over the years, I kept pitching to my then promoters and founders that, hey, you know, let's get into nutrition clinics. And to make a very long story short, one fine day I was not getting the right support. I said, let me do it myself. And that's how I decided to start um, a chain of nutrition clinics. Never started with a chain, started with one room and I named it Koa Nutrition. Now I'm a Scrabble player. And if you've ever played Scrabble Cyber, yeah. if you have a Q, you've got to get rid of fast and you need a U with that. <laughs> So the fastest letter that you could make is qua. Now qua in Latin actually means incapacity. So when I was in college and I played qua, all my friends says, there's no such English word. I'm like, no, it's there in the Scrabble dictionary. It's called incapacity of. And qua nutrition is discovering the capacity of people on a customized level. So one size does not fit all. So hence, I decided to start qua nutrition, one room, two dietitians. That was about 10 years ago. The rest is history today. Great. That's wonderful. And coming to you, Tanya, you are the current CEO of Qua Nutrition, but I know that you did not start with this dream. Please tell us, how did your journey at Qua begin? Yes, Saiba, I was in a break. I was in a temporary break after having my uh, second child. And uh, prior to that, I had worked a majority of my uh, career in the telecom circle. So there was always like long hours, and erratic working schedules and you know the poor eating habits that comes along with it and right. then after both my c-sections and then you know getting gestational diabetes oh, wow. during uh, both my pregnancies i realized that you know i was not in a good uh, space as such with regards to my health so i reached out to quad nutrition for a personal goal and then when i met ryan one thing led to another and then i got the job at quad nutrition and i started there he as a founder has given us a lot of freedom with responsibility. It's a collection of everybody's mind and experience. So when we come together, we you know initiate something new. So sometimes it works, we continue with it. And right. uh, you know if it doesn't work, you know we don't get bogged down by it. We just move over and continue. The pandemic was the game changer in terms of you know how we were all like pan India able to come together, work from home. Um, right. still continue to survive, sustain and actually grow. We kind of went overseas also. We opened up in Dubai, in Singapore. Okay. And uh, the best part about the pandemic was um, as a CEO, you know, when I was made the CEO during the pandemic was to be able to recruit women who are looking at a second career, like, you know, restarting their career because I wasn't able to do that prior to the pandemic. 
you know, okay. we always had this mindset that training had to be classroom mm-hmm. so when we moved online and i was able to empower all these women who have you know have taken a long break like how i got a restart of their my career here so similarly i was able to give these opportunities to many women women who have kids in college right um, in school that's Just, fantastic i yeah. mean most of the time women they don't know how to restart Absolutely. right and they don't have those kind of avenues correct so this gave us the opportunity to expand so now we are like a very mixed group mixed age and it's it's fun i mean we learn from each other we right. have the older generation learning from the younger generation on technology and the younger generation learning wisdom from right. the older yeah. generation so it's it's fun everyone has something to offer absolutely so it's a lot of give and take okay so ryan what is the vision behind qua and what is your usp so when i started qua nutrition one small room two dietitians i was like everyone has fads about nutrition my mother's a nutritionist at the end of the day you know she thinks she knows everything about uh, nutrition and i think that's the problem with the world today uh, nutrition is such an easy subject science that everyone calls them a self professed expert so the vision was i'm going to go out and find highly qualified studied individuals not certified individuals to join my team uh to go bio individual no one size fits all quan latin means incapacity of so the idea is to do blood testing genetic testing microbiome testing so when i started in 2010 people had not heard of gene testing in this part of the world right uh people had not uh, heard of biochemistry testing on omega 3 uh your neurotransmitter testing and everyone did two idli two dosa two paratha kind of nutrition plans so i actually at one point of time went as a a client or patient to various nutritionists across the country to just understand what was the level of service being delivered how good was it and what was the um, whole construct and then i sat down and i said okay i'm going to become a nutrition architect i'm going to write the blueprint on how if anyone walks in what is the methodology and process but no one size fits all most practices will give you a standard chart most technology that is being used today claims to have artificial intelligence but i believe that human behavior around food is very emotional so you have the emotional part right. which is the food behavior part and then you have the science part so what qua is doing is with nutritional counselors you work using technology and then you layer it with, with the relationship you build with your counselor so an app will tell you for 14 days what to do but you don't fall in love with an app and i know genuinely in qua nutrition many of our consumers actually love our dietitians mm-hmm. they come back and the vision of qua is very simple when was the last time you were held accountable for your food mm-hmm. food is food is thought as uh, you know i work very hard i want the pleasure of food don't tell me to control it but is what we do at qua is work at the science level work at the emotional level and then change the way india eats so tanya while you were scaling up uh, qua what were the challenges that you faced as the ceo okay so there is only just uh, probably in a summarized version i would say this is one challenge um and primarily not in our control is the support the women get uh, in their careers especially your uh, post marriage we find that uh, many of them very talented wonderful hard working women just go down completely uh, post marriage so they don't get the required support from the family from the family then to pursue their career and their journey so they work but it's it, it just completely comes down and eventually they give up uh, for personal reasons so that has been uh, very very challenging because you know you get good talent pool right. uh, of people you nurture them you grow them you train them they do well they really do well but uh, suddenly it just goes off and it's not their fault also sometimes so that is a challenge uh, never ending challenge uh, what i see in our company is to when, when we get the talent pool we are not able to hold on to them completely we also have people who continue to work with us who really grow and do well and you know right. earn really well but this is one area gray area that i have seen in the past 9 years at qua 
So it's very interesting that you bring this up, uh, but the workforce at Qua is largely made up of women, right? I believe there are only four men working at Qua, which is very interesting. So being a woman, what advice would you give to other working women? How do we balance uh, work-life balance? How do we reach that? So, I mean, when it comes to work-life balance, I don't look at it differently for men and women. Because this is my personal uh, opinion that in terms of like my work-life balance is sorted. I think the only time when uh, we all together felt uh, our work-life balance going topsy-turvy was during the lockdown. When the lockdown <laughs> was announced and right. you know when we didn't have our help and you know we had our children at home and everybody at home. I think that was the only time that I kind of felt a challenge of okay how am I going to manage both. So that's how women need to look and you know perceive their careers they should never have that preconceived notion that now that i've gotten to a job and you know the focus on how do i manage they should be able to do well in both spaces i mean you can't ignore your family over your work and vice versa right. i think uh, and also we are primarily women workforce mm -hmm. because Primarily, women take up uh, nutrition as a course. Yes. So uh, we are open to um, anybody who is talented. In fact, I recently hired a guy also. So we are open to taking anybody who is talented and like-minded, like you know, who have the same mindset right. of giving that qualitative service to a client. So we are open to hiring anyone. But uh, women, more women study nutrition, so we take women. Right. So my only advice is don't look at work like a burden and don't look at it it's it's an empowering uh, situation for every woman to be able to earn grow right. learn Absolutely. so they should just look at it openly and find a balance like get your support system in place you're sorted i think get rid of the guilt the personal guilt Absolutely. that should never be there i mean right. why should it even exist right it should never be there it's a normal he is working you're working i'm working it's fine we're all fair that's it and you know, for me as a founder, what I grew up in a family where my mother worked and uh, she would come home at 8 o'clock in the evening. Mm -hmm. And uh, I never felt less loved. Uh, and I saw the power that my mother had. Right. Financial, uh, you know, who she was as a woman, who she is as a woman. It's a very powerful lady. And uh, even when I married my wife, I was like, you know, cooking and cleaning, I personally feel is not the reason women are put on this planet for. You, right. can, you can hire a chef to cook. Of course, you can you can buy a robotic vacuum cleaner and a dishwasher. Mm. So I think that we are we are misplaced in 2020 on how women should work, and I believe that if they are sitting in a college, and you've got the opportunity by your parents to be educated, you're flushing down that education. You're taking away somebody else's opportunity. So when life comes at you with your different life cycles, say marriage or children, um, why does the woman have to throw up her arms and give up her job? In my profession, nutrition, majority women. So we have got to be as an organization, accepting of women, empowering women. But the give and take should be that society also needs to understand. These are not mere coaches. These are healers. Right. I consider my team as high priestess. You go to the temple. What is the temple? The body. You need a priestess to guide you along the way. So I look at them from this perspective. So when they give up, um, you know, I have many times I have conversations with her where I feel gutted. Why did that person leave us? What opportunity do we have? And I keep telling her, your job, I need to see a grandmother dietitian on our team 25 years later. We need to have that right. because they're healers. Right. Tanya, uh, how much importance do you give to company culture? The company culture is the foundation at Qua. So why is it the foundation at Qua? Because we have certain standard policies uh, when we handle our clients. So if a client is probably getting serviced in Dubai or in Hyderabad or in Mumbai, the standard of servicing, it's the same. You'll never find a difference between um, an NRI client and a client here. So it's the same. So that that's something that we're very clear on as a policy. Okay. So the whole company follows that vibe. And we also have a structure and policy wherein dietitians grow in the system. So we have multiple units, like we have our cardiac, we have our onco unit, sports, lifestyle, 
and many more. Okay. So we have a structured way in terms of which our dietitians also see growth. So all this is part of the policy and they start at an entry level, then they become a senior nutritionist, then they go on to become a chief nutritionist. Right. So you know, they, these are certain things that we have designed and formulated as a part of our culture and we all follow it like to the T. It's like the Bible for all of us. We follow it to the T. So it really is important and that keeps us, uh, you know, even though we come with certain imperfection, we all become evened out and perfect when we follow the company culture. So it's right. important. Great. And um, Ryan, so now Kwa has made a name in the market. What next? We not only attract the best talent in the world in terms of our nutrition coaches and dietitians, but also the best clients in the world. Everybody from Amir Khan, Abhishek Bachchan, Fardeen Khan's recent transformation. I worked on Anushka Sharma's uh, pregnancy nutrition plan. So we were like, wow. we knew stuff of the client before the, every anybody else in the world knows because of the trust factor. The high supremacy factor of bio-individuality. So people know we are about science and we're not just fluff. Now, the job's not yet done because the process, protocol and people are being put into place. Tanya has taken over as CEO. She's the heart of the company. She understands the culture of the company. But as a founder, for me, India needs to change the way it eats. The world needs to change the way it eats. We are eating too much on the planet. Our carbon footprint is we're eating too much. You can be more environmentally friendly by just eating lesser. So my vision is to collaborate with food startups, nutrition startups, health startups. Be the voice in these and have not only organic growth in Kwa, but go out there and capture people. For example, I started institutenutrition.com. I feel we don't have enough of nutrition, nutritionists and dietitians across the world. In India alone, we need a million dietitians. Right. So how do you train them? And when I'm training them, I'm realizing that a lot of the women coming into the workforce from academia are not suitably trained to become counselors. They're too young. Yeah. They don't have experience. So we are both training people in the subject matter, but we're also training people who already have experience. So we put all of this together. And for me personally, now I'm looking at businesses that I can go in and influence as a nutrition thought leader. So I'm now investing in um, a, a very elite brand that's targeting the carbohydrate eating space. India's eating too much of carbohydrates. So how do we get nutritional food delivered to people at lower carbs, uh, you know, prevent diabetes from aggressively hitting 200 million Indians? And on the other hand, uh, convenience of nutrition in terms of vending machines. So vending machines for me, I see the future 20 years from now, where when you go to an office, you don't have healthy beverage choices. Right. So yeah, green tea, okay, great. But I would like you to press a button and get an acai berry with, uh, you know, maybe astaxanthin in it. So this is the future because we're just going to be desk jockeys. Right. So we can't get everybody to come in for diet counseling, but we also want to target people who don't want to come for counseling by pressing a button. So for me, it's not going to stop. Um, it's just going to, change the way people are eating, educate them, get it by individual and attract wonderful talent to, to our companies and say that, hey, uh, this is a great mission to be on. It's not a job. It's a calling. Come join us. And it's like, hey, um, I'm changing somebody's life. As Ryan said, the world is eating too much and we have to teach the world to eat less. So we have a lesser carbon footprint. So let's not eat too much. Let's drink a little. Let's jump into our uh, fun segment, Sip Happens, and have some fun. So welcome to our fun segment, Sip Happens, where you're going to fight for this beautiful hamper from Krishi Crest. These are products made with naturally grown organic produce. And we have these cold-pressed healthy shots by Ojo Lifestyle. So I'm going to throw a question at the two of you. And uh, whoever answers first is safe. The other one has to take a shot, right? So you have to be quick. You have to be fast. Which is the last book that you've read? Ankur Variko's um, Do Epic Shit. Do Epic Shit, yeah. Okay. Please take a shot, Ryan. <laughs> she, answered. Book. <laughs> <laughs> she answered first. Name two things you would find in Olympian Neera Chopra's room. Chaplin? Protein powder. <laughs> okay. I thought you would say the medal. If you had to be a Disney character, which one would you be? Mickey Mouse. Okay. Jack Sparrow. <laughs> I, Mickey Mouse. <laughs> I went second, right? Okay. What is the first thing you would do if you woke up one day as Prime Minister Narendra Modi? He's doing a good job, but um, 
I'd allow the taxpayers of the country to get a little bit more respect. Okay. Okay. I'll go. <laughs> okay. So now next set of questions, I'm going to name a few people, hmm. right? And you don't have to take a shot for every name that I take. But um, which actor do you think would be fit to play the following people in their biopics? Virat Kohli. Vicky Kaushal. Yuvraj Singh. Ranveer Singh. Sanya Mirza. Deepika Padukone. Okay, great. And Shikhar Dhawan. Ranveer Singh. A younger version of Manoj Bajpayee. Okay, great. But she answered most of them, so please take a shot. Okay, great. You both did wonderfully, but you finished most of the shots. So clearly, she is a winner. Congratulations, Tanya. You are the proud winner of this beautiful hamper. Thank you. A lot of healthy cooking in your kitchen. So don't worry, Ryan. We're not going to let you go empty-handed. We have these beautiful organic gifts from Native Organica. They're our gift partner. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you, Sarma. This is so nice. We also have these very sweet uh, mementos uh, by our title sponsor and your app developer, Zokanut. I'm going to read this out for both of you. We applaud your spirit of entrepreneurship and wish you all the best for all future endeavors. Thank you once again. You so all much. the very best Thank to Quark and to both of you. Thank, Thank you so much. I hate to end this inspiring conversation with Ryan and Tanya, but this is all the time that we have today. Please join me next week, same place, same time, with a new set of guests. Till then, take care and be fit. You know that something was, you know, this depression that happens post postpartum, uh, postpartum, yeah. and we were all going through it, yeah. but no, you know, awareness. Yeah, and then the older generation. Sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> Sorry, we'll talk later. Yeah, sorry. <laughs>